COVID has taken this year, just since the outbreak, has taken more than 100 years. Look, here's the lives. It's just, it's, I mean, you think about it. More lives this year than any other year for the past 100 years. Nailed it. <laughs> Oh my God, Joe, what are you doing? Stay in your basement. Don't come out of hiding until November 4th. Like, that was bad. Now, that was a clip from a speech that Joe Biden gave in Pittsburgh where he responded to the civil unrest, the violence, and some attacks that Donald Trump had recently lobbed against him. And even though centrists are really happy with the speech that he gave, me, not so much, because it really shows that he is uh, he's tone deaf, right? He's not really listening to the protesters. He's not listening to Americans. And in a way, like he walked into numerous traps that Donald Trump set. And by saying the things that he said, like he's playing right into Donald Trump's hand. And after 2016, like you think that Democrats would be more effective at responding to Donald Trump's attacks or at least know how to brush them off. Joe Biden very clearly demonstrated that he doesn't necessarily know how to respond capably to attacks from Donald Trump. So the first thing he did was condemn the violence, the rioting and the looting. Take a look. I want to make it absolutely clear, something very clear about all of this. Rioting is not protesting. Looting is not protesting. Setting fires is not protesting. None of this is protesting. It's lawlessness, plain and simple. And those who do it should be prosecuted. Violence will not bring change. It'll only bring destruction. It's wrong in every way. It divides instead of unites. Destroys businesses, only hurts the working families that serve the community. It makes things worse across the board, not better. No, it's not what uh, Dr. King or John Lewis taught, and it must end. Fires are burning, and we have a president who fans the flames rather than fighting the flames. But. We must not burn. We have to build. This president long ago forfeited any moral leadership in this country. He can't stop the violence because for years he's fomented it. You know, he may believe mouthing the words law and order makes him strong. But his failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. Does anyone believe there'll be less violence in America if Donald Trump is reelected? We need justice in America. We need safety in America. We're facing multiple crises. Crises under Donald Trump have kept multiplying. COVID, economic devastation, unwarranted police violence, emboldened white nationalists, a reckoning on race, declining faith in the birth and the, of the right American future. There's no reason why we can't just do so much more than we're doing. The common thread, the incumbent president who makes things worse, not better. An incumbent president who sows chaos rather than providing order. An incumbent president who fails in the basic duty of the job, which is to advance the truth that all of us know they were all born with the right to life. All right, we'll stop it right there because I don't need to hear any insufferable platitudes. We heard enough at the DNC convention. But basically, point blank, he says, uh, rioting is not protesting, looting is not protesting, setting fires is not protesting. Now, I am not naive enough to think that Joe Biden would come out and say, I am pro-rioting, pro-looting, Joe Biden. Like, he's not going to say that, of course. But embedded in that condemnation of looting and rioting that we all expect from him should be at least a small signal that he understands that people are in the streets because there is real pain that they feel. They feel like the system has failed them. So they have no choice. They have nothing left to do. So they're just burning this whole system down, rioting, looting, because government isn't listening to them. So what else are they supposed to do? I mean, they protest and nobody listens. Colin Kaepernick takes a knee and even Democrats like Ruth Bader Ginsburg condemns him and calls it stupid. Obama says that he hopes he realizes how Colin Kaepernick is hurting people. So they protest and that's bad. But if they riot and loot and get people to pay attention, then that's still bad. So it's like they're in this lose-lose 
predicament. Nothing they ever say or do is going to persuade people. I mean, when they protest, they say defund the police. Joe Biden responds by saying, actually, I'm going to increase funding for the police. Well, why do they need more money? Like, for more implicit bias training? Clearly, that isn't effective. That's not working. So, I mean, at the end of the day, what we saw from him here was just him being tone deaf and out of touch. This is why people aren't enthusiastic for Joe Biden. He just, he doesn't get it. He's the wrong person for this moment. But believe it or not, it gets even worse. Ask yourself, do I look like a radical socialist with a soft spot for rioters? Really? I want a safe America, safe from COVID, safe from crime and looting, safe from racially motivated violence, safe from bad cops. Let me be crystal clear, safe from four more years of Donald Trump. I look at this violence and I see lives and communities and the dreams of small businesses being destroyed and the opportunity for real progress on the issues of race and police reform and justice being put to the test. Donald Trump looks at this violence and he sees a political lifeline. Having failed to protect this nation from the virus that has killed more than 180,000 Americans so far, Trump posts an all caps tweet screaming law and order to save his campaign. One of his closest political advisors in the White House doesn't even bother to speak in code. She just comes out and she says it. Quote, the more chaos, violence, the better it is for Trump's re-election. Just think about that. This is a sitting president of the United States of America. He's supposed to be protecting this country, but instead he's rooting for chaos and violence. The simple truth is Donald Trump failed to protect America. So now, he's trying to scare America. So again, he's not necessarily wrong. Like, I don't hate everything that he said there, but it's largely tone deaf. Because rather than just responding to Donald Trump calling you a socialist by saying, no, I'm not, nuh-uh, what you can actually do is try to retake that narrative back, right? Say, well, you know, if caring for Americans makes me a socialist, then I will happily own that title. I don't have to be a socialist to realize that we need fundamental changes in this country. If I'm a socialist for the poor, then I guess Donald Trump is a socialist for the rich. But I mean, Joe Biden can't say any of this because he doesn't believe any of this. He doesn't believe in any structural changes that are substantial. He doesn't believe in this. So he has no way of meaningfully responding to these attacks, which is why I said during the primaries, it'd actually be nice. It might be an asset to Democrats if they had someone as the nominee who identified as a socialist, because at least then you can attempt to educate people and explain to them what you mean by saying you're a socialist rather than run away from it. Because just running away from it, saying I'm not a socialist, like you're not taking back the narrative effectively. But I mean, Democrats do this all the time. They know exactly what Republicans are going to say, and they still don't know how to respond to that same playbook that they've used for decades now. But... Joe Biden went on to make a point about Donald Trump's bizarre attack because Donald Trump oddly has been saying all of this violence is happening in Joe Biden's America when you're president. So that's illogical. It doesn't make any sense. And Joe Biden responded to that. But there's still something missing, even if I think that most of what he said here is pretty spot on. Trump and Pence are running on this, and I find it fascinating. Quote, you won't be safe in Joe Biden's America. And what's their proof? The violence we're seeing in Donald Trump's America. These are not images of some imagined Joe Biden America in the future. These are images of Donald Trump's America today. He keeps telling you, if only he was president, it wouldn't happen. If he was president, he keeps telling us that he was president, you'd feel safe. Well, he is president, whether he knows it or not. And it is happening. It's getting worse, and you know why? Because Donald Trump adds fuel to every fire. So I'm not sure why he hasn't made this exact point. Like the moment Trump started saying that all of this violence is because of Biden's America, like that doesn't even make sense, you're the president. So I'm glad that he's finally saying it. Um, on top of that, um, he says that violence is getting worse because Donald Trump is fanning the flames. That's accurate, that's correct. So most of what he said here is fine. 
but there's one missing variable that he still doesn't address. Why were there riots and looting in Kenosha, Wisconsin? It was peaceful until a police officer shot Jacob Blake in the back seven times. So you can't just say Trump is the reason why things are the way that they are. Like you have to speak to the specific pain of these communities. You are the architect of the crime bill. And in response to calls for police to be defunded, you are defiant. You're saying, I want to increase funding to police departments. Like you have to demonstrate that you care. And he hasn't done this. He just hasn't been sufficient. We get, you know, more liberal solutions, more committees to address the problems, more money for the police departments so they can put that towards body cameras and implicit bias training. But at the end of the day, I mean, we see how brazen police officers are where we've had months of protests in cities across the country and a police officer still shoots an unarmed black man seven times in the back. So if they're going to do that, you're going to need more than implicit bias training. So you just have to at least express in some way to people, you understand the scope of this issue and how big it is and what we need to do to change it. But you just, you're not doing that. You're not meeting this moment. But I want to play one more clip for you because this is the worst thing that we've seen here. It doesn't have to be this way. When President Obama and I were in the White House, we had to defend federal property. We did it. We didn't see it. You didn't see us whipping up fears around the deployment of secret federal troops. We just did our job. And the federal property was protected. When President Obama and I were in office, we didn't look at cities as Democratic or Republican run. These are American cities. But Trump doesn't see him himself as president for all of America. Frankly, I believe if I were president today, the country would be safer and we'd be seeing a lot less violence. And here's why. I have said we must address the issue of racial injustice. I've personally spoken to George Floyd's family and to Jacob Blake's family. I know their pain, and so do you. I know the justice they seek, and so do you. They've told us none of this violence respects or honors George or Jacob. I believe we can bring these, 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 these folks fighting for racial justice to the table. I've worked with police in this country for many years. I know most cops are good, decent people. I know how they risk their lives every time they put that shield on and go out the door. And I'm confident I can bring the police to the table as well. I'd make sure every mayor and governor had the support they needed from the federal government. But I wouldn't be looking to use the United States military against our own people. If I were president, my language would be less divisive. I'd be looking to lower the temperature in this country, not raise it. I'd be looking to unite the nation. That, to me, was by far the worst moment from this speech, because the underlying implication of that is that Donald Trump isn't necessarily wrong for deploying secret police to Portland to kidnap people in unmarked vehicles. He's just wrong to, like, scare people after doing it. I don't even know what to say about that. He says, when President Obama and I were in the White House, we had to defend federal property. We did it. You didn't see us whipping up fears around the deployment of secret federal troops. We just did our job and federal property was protected. So in other words, you're telling people in the streets, you agree with Trump. You just don't agree with the way that he's doing things. You'd be less divisive as you try to violently crush protests. Like that's the message that I get if I'm someone in the streets listening to this. Like, I can't even believe you would say this as the Democratic Party's nominee. This isn't a gotcha to Donald Trump. This is a gotcha to yourself. It's a self-own. Now, I do believe that Joe Biden would, in fact, be more, you know, inclusive, less divisive than Donald Trump when it comes to these issues. I'm glad that he's in contact with the families of George Floyd and Jacob Blake. But again, he doesn't get it. Like, his goal is to bring racial justice advocates and police together and, like, let them just talk it out. That's kind of what I got from that. And he says, you know, most cops are good, except even the quote unquote good cops are susceptible to a culture 
of violence and racism. And even if they're a good cop that wants to report police misconduct or racism, they're dissuaded from doing that. And that's not going to change if you offer a more implicit bias training. Like, you need to change the system entirely. Anything short of systemic change isn't going to do the trick. Also, how is this going to happen if you're promising to bring both sides to the table and one side not just has more power, but it has powerful unions, well-funded unions to protect them? Unions that are institutions that are resistant to change, by the way. And, you know, the other side is fighting the entire system with white supremacy embedded in it. Like, these are not equal and opposite sides. There's a power imbalance here that you're not grasping or at least letting us know that you understand. How are you going to be different than Donald Trump? Like, how can you assure people that unlike Trump, you're going to stop the violence when you don't even really communicate to us that you understand why it's taking place in the first place? Understand, you can dislike the rioting and the looting, but understand, none of this would be a thing right now if police officers weren't killing black Americans with impunity. Like, you understand that, right? Like, you have to communicate to us that you get that. All of the rioting, all of the looting would not be happening right now if this wasn't an issue that reached a tipping point. So, I mean, I see this speech from Joe Biden and I just think, this is why nobody's excited to support him, right? And if he wins, it will be because there are enough anti-Trump voters that are motivated to come out and uh, support him. But, I mean, it just feels like at this point, like, He's playing into Trump's hands and he doesn't know how to respond to Donald Trump. And as a result, he's kind of fumbling it. Like the best thing to do would be hide away until this election is over. Otherwise, like you're going to keep putting your foot in your mouth and you're going to make matters worse. Like, I don't know if there's anything you can say to um, make people, you know, feel more comfort knowing that you'd be president and you do things different when you just admitted that you kind of agree with Donald Trump. You just disagree with the way he does things, but you agree with the things that he's doing like you can't you can't do that you can't do that so it's best to just say nothing stay inside until after this election and shut up if you're gonna say things like this but i mean apparently you know i'm in the minority i guess because centrists seem to think that he had a lot of like mic drop moments and there were some good moments there i'm not gonna lie and detract from all of it but you know if you are in the streets right now protesting are you gonna come away from that speech thinking that joe biden is on your side I don't know, probably not. But, you know, if you come away from that feeling like he's not on your side, then does that mean you're going to vote for him? I don't know. So it's just, um, it feels like, you know, Democrats are always snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory. And I kind of like got that sense from this speech. Joe Biden doesn't know what to say. Uh, he just makes matters worse for himself um, when you know, you just kind of give Trump enough rope to hang himself and you could just win because he's a big enough dumbass to keep saying stupid things. But Joe Biden comes in and tries to like one up Donald Trump in some ways. And it's just it's sad to watch because Democrats are blowing it and I hope that they don't blow it. But I mean, when you say things like this. It's just you can't help but feel hopeless. You know you know the you know the thing thing you're getting nervous man man